Hi, welcome to Lesson 7.6. So today we're going to review and learn about two new trigonometric functions, sine and cosine ratios. So as we learn about these, we're going to learn the term SOHCAHTOA, and I'm going to go into that in just a few minutes here. But before we learn what SOHCAHTOA is, let's talk about and refresh our memory about how to label a triangle. So we've got a right triangle over here, triangle ABC. And we're going to talk about angle A right now and label its side. So if we have angle A right here, and we want to find its adjacent side, remember that's going to be the side that shares or touches the vertex of angle A. So our adjacent side is going to be side length AC. Our opposite side to angle A is going to be side length BC, where it doesn't actually physically touch the vertex angle A at all. It is opposite to the side. And then lastly, we have our hypotenuse, which is going to be side length AB. Okay, so now that we've got our triangle down again, let's quickly refresh our memory about tangent, which we learned in lesson 7.5. So if you remember, the tangent ratio was our opposite over our adjacent. And earlier on this slide, I said the term SOHCAHTOA. We've got SOHCAHTOA right here. It is not a coincidence that our TOA part of this equation is T for tangent, O for opposite, A for adjacent. So this SOHCAHTOA term is just strictly there to help you remember how to label your triangle and what the different trigonometric functions stand or represent. So we've got TOA, which is tangent equals opposite over adjacent. So that's going to be our side length BC, if we're talking about tangent of A. So tangent of A equals BC over adjacent side, which will be AC. Okay, so again, that's just review from last lesson. But now we're going to apply the same information and figure out what our sine and our cosine ratios are. So let's go ahead and clear this. And now we're going to learn about sine. So we're going to take a look at the SOHCAHTOA again. The SO part of our SOHCAHTOA is for sine. So sine, which is S, equals opposite, or O, over hypotenuse, H, SOHCAHTOA. So that's our SO part. So sine is going to be opposite, if we're talking again with angle A, sine of A will be our opposite side, which will be BC, over our hypotenuse, which is AB. Okay, so our last trig function that we're going to learn today is cosine. Take a wild guess what you think that's going to be. We've got ka right here, cosine, A and H. All right, you probably guessed it right. Cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So again, with our triangle ABC, if we're going to talk about cosine of angle A, our adjacent side is AC, and our hypotenuse, still the same hypotenuse, is AB. So that's how you're going to figure out the trig functions, and depending on which trig function they're asking for, you now have this information. and this nice little saying, I don't know exactly what you would call it, but SOHCAHTOA that will help you remember what each of the trig functions are, whether it's sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, or tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. So let's put these trig functions into use and go over a couple of examples. So we've got a triangle here, triangle ABC, and it's filled out with different side lengths. We want to find out what sine of A is and what sine of B is. So remember, we've got our SOHCAHTOA and sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's our SO part. So sine of A equals opposite, here's angle A, so opposite will be BC or has a side length of 40 over our, our hypotenuse, which is 85. So 
So sine of A, and I should have put an A right there, sorry about that, is 40 over 85. Sine of B, so now we're talking about angle B here. So we have to label our triangle correctly and we want the opposite side, so the side that's not touching the vertex B. So sine of B is going to be 75 now over hypotenuse. Hypotenuse remains the same, so 75 over 85. Okay, now let's go ahead and clear that off. Our next example is to find cosine of A and cosine of B. So cosine, if you remember, was your adjacent side over your hypotenuse. So if we're going to find cosine of A, here's angle A. We want the adjacent side, so the side that's touching the same vertex. So that's going to equal 75 over our hypotenuse, which is 85. We had that fraction before. Actually, if you remember, that also equaled sine of B. So there's two different ways that you could have gotten this fraction. Now, let's find cosine of B. So remember, we have to figure out what our angle is. Here's angle B. So drawing this angle side, we see that 40 is going to be our adjacent side. So that equals 40 over our hypotenuse, which will be 85. And if you remember, when we did the sine of A, that had the same fraction. So again, there's two different ways to come up with the same ratio. It just depends what angle you're given or what pieces of information that you're given that you will figure out how to use and set up your right trig ratio. Okay, lastly, we're going to find x. So we're going to change out this triangle. We've got a new triangle here with different values, and we need to find x. So this becomes a little bit trickier. We have an angle value here angle A, and we have to see which trig function is going to help us the most. So looking at angle A, we've got our adjacent side and our hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse. So if we write out our SOHCAHTOA, we have sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, ka, which is cosine, is adjacent over hypotenuse, and TOA. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. We want adjacent over hypotenuse, so we are going to use our cosine function for this one, for this answer right here. And we need to find the value of x. So that means we have cosine of 32 degrees equals our adjacent side, which is x, over 18. So in order to solve for x, now we're just going to perform some algebra multiply 18 to both sides, our 18 will cancel, and remember now, you want your calculator in degree mode because our cosine right here is in degrees. So make sure when you're solving this that you've got this in degree mode, you're going to type in 18 times cosine of 32, and when you solve that, you are going to get x equals 15.3 and you've solved the problem. Okay, we're going to go on to one last concept here. And this is angles of elevation and depression. Okay, so I've got this kind of weird rectangle looking diagram here. And you can see that it's got angle of depression and angle elevation written in there. And we've got two right triangles that are kind of outlined here. So when we're talking about different things such as height or distance away from an object or how far is something down, things like that, the trig functions really come into play here and we can use them to find these distances. And we have these right triangles and angles of depression or elevation, depending on what information you're given, that you can set up to solve for a problem. So let's take a look at an actual example. I think it's probably best just to go straight to an example for these types of problems and get your hands kind of on the 
on the math here versus just talking through the concepts. So we've got an example here where a pilot is looking at an airport from the airplane. The angle of depression is 29 degrees. If the plane is 10,000 feet in the air, approximately how far is that plane from the airport? So we're going to take a look at the top triangle here and we're going to draw it down here just to kind of separate it. So we've got a right triangle and here's our airplane. Flying in the air. We know that it's an angle of depression from where the pilot's looking down and that has an angle of depression of 29 degrees. And they tell us that the airplane is 10,000 feet in the air. So we know that this side length right here is 10,000. We want to know if this is our airport right here, how far is this airplane from the airport? and it's going to be this distance here that we're looking at, so our, our hypotenuse of our right triangle. So now that we've got our diagram set up, let's figure out what it is that we're looking for. We've got an angle, we've got the side length that's opposite to that angle, and we are looking for the hypotenuse. So remember, we've got SOHCAHTOA, We're looking for opposite over hypotenuse. So we're going to use our sine function. So when we set up our equation, we're going to say sine of 29 degrees equals our opposite side, which is 10,000, over our hypotenuse, which is x. So when you solve this problem out, you're going to get x equals 10,000 over sine of 29. Remember, you're going to have to do algebra, so you're going to multiply x to both sides, and then you're going to divide by sine of 29 to get x by itself, and you'll end up with this equation right here. So when you plug 10,000 divided by sine of 29 degrees, and remember, calculator has to be in degree mode, you'll end up getting that the airport is approximately 20 1,627 feet away from the airplane. So you've just used angle of depression, so this triangle right here, to solve how far the airplane is away from the airport. We're going to go over more examples in class when you start your classwork, but that's just one example to kind of help you with the information here. Anyway, that is it for today. I hope you guys are having a great day and look forward to seeing you in class. Take care. Bye-bye.